Jay Williams, Let's Live Life, and we're back. I'm going to cut her fucking head off. Let's relive it. When I first met Wild Man, it was the beginning of my bid. At the time, I had somebody bringing me in drugs. I was selling drugs. That was my hustle. That, my, that was my way of sending money home and still being able to take care of my son from behind the walls. And immediately, my celly, this blood dude named Face from Richmond, told me, he said, you can't just be out here pumping that. You got to get up with Wild Man. That's what the fuck I got to get up with a Wild Man for? It's like, you got to get up with Wild Man. That's just the way it works, you know what I mean? Out here on this yard, these buildings, anything that happens, it goes through Wild Man before it happens. And I, I'm, I wasn't feeling that. I'm like, yo, I ain't got to break shit with him. He's like, you going to have to break, you know, you got to talk to him, do something, man. I'm not breaking nothing off. I'm not. I'm not that dude. It's going to be what it's going to be. We got to figure it out one way or another, but I'm not breaking nothing off, man. I'm not giving nobody else my shit. Ain't happening. I'm not that dude. So he was like, well, you need, you need to go ahead and, you know, figure something out, man, because you're going to have to talk to Wild Man. All right. Had never seen Wild Man. Didn't know anything about him. Just what I had heard, you know, from my cellmate. We're going to the chow hall later that day, and I got the pack earlier, you know, and the pack is whatever drugs it is you're deciding to sell, whatever's in demand at the time. And as we're going through the chow hall line, he looks and he says, doesn't point, but he kind of nods his head. He's like, see the dude right there with the old penitentiary glasses on, the mole on his forehead? I said, yeah. He said, that's wild, man. My own boy nods at him. He nods back at him. I nod at him, and he kind of looks at me for a minute. I don't know if he was sizing me up or what he was doing, but he had already heard about me. He already knew who I was, just like I knew who he was. <clears throat> but he nodded back, which is our way of saying what's up without saying what's up. So as we're walking by him, and you got to walk, you know, down the side of the wall, and then down this wall, down this other wall. It's like a square. That's what the chow is. Then when you get to the end of the one wall, there, you know, there's a, a line where they make food. And then a hole they push it out of a chuck hole. As I'm passing Wild Man, he kind of sits back and he says, Hey, come holler at me. Now, one thing about these lifers and dudes like Wild Man, anytime they say, Come holler at me, it's business. They're not just trying to talk, they're not trying to just shoot this shit. When somebody says, Come holler at me, there's a reason behind it. You know what I mean? He ain't trying to do a crossword puzzle. He does not give a shit how your day has gone. Something needs to be discussed. So I just look at him and nod. Keep him moving. I get my tray. I go over. I sit down at this table. And it's just him sitting there by himself. I said, what's up, man? I'm Jay. He said, I know who you are. I said, you wild, man. He said, yeah, I'm wild, man. I said, right, so, uh, what's up? What you need to holler at me about? So he goes on to tell me. You know, anything that gets sold around here. First off, he tells me, I've been in this place a long motherfucking time, youngin'. That's what he called me, youngin'. I've been in here a long time, youngin'. He said, I got my ways of doing things. The way I let shit run, it runs smooth. And if money's made, I get in. I said, so, uh, you know, what's your proposal, man? He was like, you already know what it is. You got to break it off. I said, well, that's, you know, that's not an option, man. I can't. I'm not breaking nothing off. I'm not. Not going to happen. I said, I got a name to uphold, a reputation to uphold. So it's not happening. You know, I, I got I got to hold my name down. I'm not breaking you off nothing. So you got you to gotta figure something out, man. He said, oh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And I knew right then and there I was looking at trouble. And these type of dudes, you know, you could beat Wild Man up all day if you want. You're going to lose. The end the result is... He's going to cut you from ear to ear. He's going to, you know, he's going to take you up out of here. Put your hands on a man like that if you want to, thinking that's how a fight is won, not knowing the extent of where he'll take it. You'll learn real quick that when you're dealing with someone that has no regard for human life, your body, what they can do to you, the gore that comes with it, it's not somebody you want problems with. So we get to talk, and I said, that, you know, that's not an option, man. So we got to figure something out. So we sit there for a minute. And I guess he thought that when I came over and sat down, 
He was going to be able to intimidate me. He was going to be able to scare me, take something from me. That wasn't happening, man. I'm not going to fucking let it happen. Nobody ever did it on the streets. And, and you know, the years I was out there, it's not going to happen in here. So he said, well, this is what's up. You can push your shit, do what you do. But I want in. He was trying to tell me about percentages and this and that. And I said, no, I got a better idea, man. Here's what I'll do. I said, I'll give you work for this price, which is cheaper than the price I charge everybody else. So that you can make your money. I still make my money. It's a win-win situation. You're already, for what costs $20 on the streets worth the drugs, you're going to spend $100 or better in prison. That's how it is. It's like inflated beyond belief because you can't just go down the block and get it. The stuff you take after you roll a blunt and you brush off your jeans when you're in the car, that's $10 in prison. You know what I mean? That little bit of shit you just had on your jeans that you just did like that, you can get $10 for that. So it's not hurting me, you know, to give him a $200 pack at $170 because he's going to take that pack and he's going to flip it. He's going to beat people in the head for it and it's going to come back in the long run. So we agree on it. This all goes smooth, a wild man for a while. And before you know it, I'm jammed up, man. I get caught up in the visitation room. They didn't catch me with shit. They caught my people coming in. They get tore off. Bunch of sacks of crack were discovered and shit on one of the girls. So I go to the hole for a year. I do the year in the hole, come out looking like Moses with the big ass beard, you know. I've been gone to the hole for the last year. They take me and they put me in the pod. Well, now when they put me in this pod, this pod wild man lives in. Wild man comes to the door. What's up, youngin? See, you held it down while you was gone. So what you talking about? He said, they ain't coming here and lock nobody else up on the investigation or question nobody else. So that means you did your part. You know what I mean? You stayed solid. I said, yeah, man. Well, let me get myself together. I'll holler at you. That was where after that year and... Everybody found out, all right, when this dude, you know, something happens, he's going to hold it. He's going to wear it. He's not going to tell nobody. That's where me and Wild Man's relationship, I would guess, I would say, went to the next level. And when I say relationship, don't be on no homo shit. I'm talking about as far as our business relationships, our everyday dealings, you know, us being around each other, that type of stuff. He had this job that he had to get up every morning. You know, we stand up, you know. Lights on, feet on the floor, stand for count every morning at 5.30. Dead out your sleep, you hear them blow that whistle. You turn your cell light on, you get out of bed, you stand there, they walk by, look at you, mark it down that you're there. Wild Man was one of those dudes, he'd be up at 5 o'clock. Been down a long time. He was state struck, meaning all he really knew was prison life anymore. So he gets up early every single morning, goes to work, comes back in about 6 o'clock in the evenings. Most days, some days he'll have off, yada, yada, yada. It's the prison job. On the night that I seen Wild Man Spaz out for the first time, it was probably 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. Wild Man would go to bed every night, 9, 9.30, you know, right after count, the last count for the night cleared. Wild Man, before that, he'd already, have, you know, did whatever he was going to do for the night. He was in bed watching his little show before he goes to sleep on his little TV. And that said, he sleep by 10 o'clock. Here we are, it's 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And we got these dudes out there. And you got some dudes in prison that can spit, man. You got some talented dudes that got nothing but time to write. These dudes could make it in the music industry. Some of the hottest rappers I've ever heard in my life were in prison, man. These dudes are just creative. Well, they're out there and they got the pod trash can and they're beating on the lid of it. do doom, do doom. Right, making beats, and it's all blood dudes, man. You got a couple of dudes that ain't really with them, but they're just listening. Everybody's just vibing to the dudes spitting and whatnot, and this shit is echoing through the pod. Now, a lot of these dudes are sleepers. They're asleep right now because this pod I'm in, it's majority lifers. Man, I hear wild man's door, bong, slide open. You look over, and you could hear that door when it clanged over the sound of this, this almost like a drum sound. From where they're beating on the trash can, do spitting, and he steps out into the door and goes, "No!" as loud as he can, and everybody looks over. And there stands, stands Wild Man 
with his old school penitentiary glasses on and a pair of dingy, tidy whiteies and a fucking knife that's about 18 inches long. He said, the next one of you little motherfuckers rap, bang on that goddamn trash can, or wake me up out of my sleep, I'm going to cut your motherfucking head off. Every, it got deathly silent. I mean, to the point that there was no noise. He had everybody's attention, blade in his hand, was in his underwear, pair of state boots on. Then you visualize this maybe six foot tall black man, maybe 220 pounds, got the used to be in good shape old man frame, standing there, some dingy tidy whities with a rough, rugged piece of prison shank. That if, pot, if he wanted to, he could put through one side of your head and out the other. If he stabbed you in your chest, it would come out your back. That's what we all saw. I was sitting on the bench watching the TV, just listening to the dude spitting shit. And Wild Man immediately had the whole crowd. He said, y'all take that shit to fuck in the cell. I'll kill one of you motherfuckers out here. Don't you ever disrespect me again. These dudes dipped. A lot of these dudes are lifers. Large majority of them were killers. They didn't want no problem with Wild Man. I looked at him. He looked at me. Looked back around the room to see if anybody had a problem with it. They pushed that trash can back against the wall and went in their cells. Now let's fast forward so we can get to the story, man. I just had to give y'all the backdrop so you can understand who we're dealing with right here. A real killer. A man that beat another man with a baseball bat at another compound that if he was ever going home, he ain't going home now does not give a fuck about going home. He doesn't care about you seeing your brains, your guts, you dying, your mama being upset. He doesn't care about a judge. He doesn't care about a hole. He doesn't care about none of that shit. No regard for life. Wild man was the definition of a killer, the definition of a real true lifer. So we fast forward, man. Wild man's working in Enterprise. And at the time, Enterprise is the company that runs the company that we work for inside the prison. Only select inmates have this job. I worked maintenance. I did not work at this prison for Enterprise. What Wild Man did, his job was to assemble cubicles all day. They had a sanding pit where they sanded down furniture. That a, you know, a, a pit where they assembled furniture and they had this, this side where they did cubicles. Well, these cubicles are put together with angle iron. And for anybody that's a welder, knows anything about construction, knows what angle iron is, it's a piece of steel that's shaped like an L. It's usually an inch by inch, and it comes in long sheets. And it's thick, thick, thick metal. This particular day, Wild Man shows up, and I'm back from work, and he comes back early. And like I told you, when somebody says, let me holler at you, it's business. Youngin, let me holler at you. Oh, fuck, man. What's this dude got going on? So I go over to his cell, and he's limping as he's coming across the pod. I'm thinking, damn, this dude's done got into it with somebody. He's about to murder somebody. Why is he limping? He said, step in my cell. And I ain't going to say I trust a wild man, but I knew that I hadn't done anything that would put me in a position to have any fear of being in that man's cell or, you know, being invited in. So I stepped in. I said, what's up? And he reaches down to his pants. And he pulls what looks like a fucking katana out the front of his pants that he's got strapped to his leg. I don't know how he got through the metal detector with it in the hallway over there beside the shop. You know, he's a convict. He knows how to finagle and get around things. But anyway, he pulls this fucking sword that he has made when nobody's looking. Wild man's over there at the grinder table where they grind it off the sharp edges of the angle iron. He's done cut this piece of metal in half, and it is now a full-fledged fucking sword. And I'm not talking about what you see on TV where you see a knife like this. I'm talking about some shit you would see a fucking samurai with in a bootleg B-grade movie. He pulls this bitch out. It's got a handle on it. It is sharp. I mean, sharp to the point that it'll cut you. It's got a tip on the end of it that's surgical that it, you can just take your hand, tap it against it, and knock a hole in your hand. I need you to hold this. We need to holler when I, I need to holler at you when I get back from work. I said, hold it? Fuck you, hold it. What do I want to hold that big ass knife for? So he says, look, just hold this, man. I don't know if they know what's missing. 
I don't know if anybody might have seen me put it up, you know, just hold it, make it disappear until I get back. I'm not holding this motherfucker, man. You're not about to catch me with this big ass samurai sword and bury my ass under some prison up in the mountains somewhere and have me there forever. So I said, yo, I'll make it disappear until you get back. I need to holler at you when I get back. I said, oh, fuck, man. What have I got myself into? I go into the broom closet. Got brooms and mops and stuff there. And they have this shelf that's put up where you hang brooms and mops at the time. But you can pull it a little bit away from the wall. So I pull it away from the wall. I take this fucking big ass sword and I stick it behind there. And I push the shelf back. He returns that evening. Comes in like nothing's wrong. Like you didn't just give me the fucking sword from Braveheart. Like everything is just fucking Alice in Wonderland in this bitch. Let's go sit at the bench, Jay. We need to talk. Fuck, man. What's up, man? So I've been talking to this counselor. They owe me some good time. Good time meaning, you know, you've been good so you get certain days off your sentence. He's got a fucking life sentence. Why is he worried about that? That's why the lady's shutting him off because it doesn't matter. He's never going home. They owe me some good time, Jay. I want that. Counselor keeps fucking with me, playing with me. She's playing with my paperwork. She don't want to listen to me. She keeps shutting the door in my face. I said, so, uh, what's up, man? I'm going to cut her fucking head off. Whoa. Not what I said, but that's probably what my eyes look like. I said, yeah. What are you talking about, man? You tripping right now. He was like, nah, I ain't tripping. I'm going to kill this motherfucking bitch and you going to help me. See, how you, how you, uh, you know... First of all, why, man, that's a female. I don't give a fuck what it is. That's a guard. Ain't no fucking female. Ain't no male, female in here. Everything. You an inmate and you a motherfucking guard. That's a guard. I said, that's a counselor. That's a fucking guard. I said, all right, man. You know what I mean? Fuck, it's a guard. So here's what's going to happen, youngin. I got this knife. He pulls out another knife. And it's sharp, man. You see some of these shits these dudes make, you're like, damn, I used to make them so I know. He pulls out this knife, and it's probably about a 10-inch blade. You got a handle on it. You got a sheath. You put it in. He said, so this is what's going to happen. I said, all right, tell me what's going to happen. Then. He said, you going to go get the door popped on the second floor. And what it is is at the end of the tier, there's a metal door there. If that door opens, it lets you into this open area where there's a counselor's office, there's a barber shop, there's a little small laundry room area, and a storage area. That's it. But the counselor's office is located inside that area. He said, you're going to go to the booth and you're going to tell them to pop the door that you need to get into the barber shop. And they're going to open it for you and not think nothing about it, especially with this bitch that's on the shift. I said, all right. He was like, you're going to go ahead and have me an extra set of clothes that I'm going to give you waiting in the shower right there, but you're going to put a trash bag with them. Hang a towel over the door so everybody knows don't go in that shower. I said, all right. He's like, I'm going to slide through. I'm going to go up in her fucking office and I'm going to hack her ass up with this sword. I'm a chopper, murderer, hacker to pieces. He's like, then I'm going to take this fucking knife and I'm going to cut her head off with it. And leave it laying there. He said, when I'm done, I'm going to walk over to the little elevator shaft. And I'm going to drop both the blades down the elevator. The knife and the and the sword. And next week, when you and the maintenance crew service the elevator, you're going to make the knives disappear. I'm sitting there as he's telling me this. As he's explaining to me that, A, a not are we only about to take a human life. B, this is a female. C, I don't have a life sentence, and D, you're fucking nuts for the reason you want to kill her. Tells me, youngin', after I kill the bitch, you gonna get the door pop, push the button. I don't ever want him to see me. He said, I'm gonna take the bloody clothes, I'm gonna put them inside the trash bag, I'm gonna jump straight in the shower, start showering off the blood. But I'm gonna take, as soon as I step in, I'm gonna take the dirty clothes, bloody clothes off, put them in the trash bag, and I'm gonna slide them out. I need you to grab that bag, take it over to the fucking trash can, and throw it in the trash can. He doesn't think that his DNA is on the clothes. He's just thinking, I'm not walking around in bloody clothes. I'm going to shower like nothing happened, change my clothes, go back to my cell, and that's the end of it. That bitch is dead. We'll get a new counselor. 
I'll get my good time back. I sat there and he just, after that, it was like Charlie Brown talking. You know what I mean? Wah, 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 wah. Everything he was saying just sounded wah, 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 wah. And I had to talk to this man. I said, wow, well, man, hold on, man. Hold, hold, hold the fuck up, man. I'm not about to help you kill this woman. Fuck you mean? You ain't scared, are you? Scared? This ain't a matter of scared. I'm not stupid. I said, I got a 10 year sentence, man. But you a motherfucking soldier, right? I said, absolutely, I'm a soldier. But I'm not signing up to kill no woman, man. I'm not signing up to do the rest of my life in here, wild man. I want to go the fuck home. I said, you can do what you want to do. If you want to kill the woman, and that's what you got set in your mind, that's what you're going to do. But that's not what I'm going to do, man. I said, you need to figure something out. But Jay's not about to help you kill no motherfucking counselor, man. I'm not. No disrespect. Maybe, you, 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 you know, you got my gangster fucked up. And I came off too hard. I don't know. Why did see you you got I don't matter what you seen me do. I'm not about to help you kill no fucking counselor. Why well, cut that fucking bitch's head off by my goddamn self then? I don't need nobody's fucking help. I just thought you'd be the real one in here. I said the real one is the one that tells you that's a dumb idea, man. You having a bad day. I ain't having a bad day. I've been making this sore for two fucking months. I said, Yeah, man, well, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I'm not about to do that, man. I'm not. I said, look, I suggest, man, you put in the proper paperwork, ask for a new counselor, and go about it a different way. Nah, that bitch gonna die. That bitch gonna die. I'm gonna cut her motherfucking head off. Now, as we're talking, he's talking louder and louder to where people around us are starting to catch on to our conversation. He's com completely broke the convict code of silence and keeping it between us. Other people have heard. So while we're in the midst of having this conversation, Somebody else has got a piece of paper and is writing down pretty much what they've overheard without so much putting me in it. Just that wild man is plotting to kill the counselor. He has a sword. He has a knife. Yada, 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 all that shit. So he said, look, if you ain't going to be involved, youngin, then you need to make sure your ass is out of camera sight. You don't want nothing to fall back on you. Stay the fuck in your cell on Saturday. Because Saturday is going down. She got a half a day at work. I'm going in there early that morning, that shift. I'm going to chop that bitch's head off. And that's what the fuck it is, man. I said, hey, I can't tell you what to do, man. Morally, and don't take this the wrong way. I think you're fucking tripping, man. I don't want no parts of it. You do what you got to do, man. All right, then. I do it my fucking self. So that's, that's what you're going to have to do, bro, because I'm not helping you. Maybe six, seven hours later, man. Lockdown! They come in yelling, lockdown! Everybody locked down! They lock us down. They go straight to wild man's cell. Bring him out in handcuffs, and they've got him standing there. They come out, and they've got that big-ass knife that he had. Sergeant's got it, hands it to the lieutenant. Lieutenant hands it to the captain. They put it inside a bag. They go to that fucking broom closet where I was at, move that shelf, and I looked around to kind of see the reaction of other people because I already knew when I seen them going in there why they were going in there. They were going to get that fucking sword I hid. They come walking out, and you could see everybody's eyes. Guys that had been down a long time, guys that shouldn't have been in that pod, that weren't lifers, Guys that might have been going home next year, all their eyes looked like they were bulging out of their head. Like, who the fuck owns that sword? They packed wild man shit up, took him to the hole, and shipped him off to the mountains. He never got a chance to kill that woman because whoever it was around us that was listening dropped a kite on wild man and told everything that they overheard him saying and what his plan was so his plot got foiled before it happened and it's a good thing because within the next 48 hours i have no doubts a wild man was going to cut that woman's head off she probably to this day has heard rumors about it but does not know how close she came to losing her life because somebody else felt like 
she was fucking with theirs. Now I want to go ahead and say this. I looked into Wild Man, pulled up his name, was gonna show you some pictures of him. Wild Man died this year. Didn't make it home from prison. I don't know why he died. I don't know if he was killed. I don't know if he was cancer. You know, I don't know what happened, but I know that Wild Man is now dead. Now, I always try to give y'all something positive out of the bad, and this is a hard one to come up with. What I'm going to tell you about the story I just told y'all is, is this. Don't let anyone else influence you or make you be someone that you're not. I don't care if you're scared, intimidated, don't let someone else determine what you're going to do. If wild men would have grabbed somebody younger than me, somebody not as seasoned, somebody that just wanted to be a follower, they would have killed that woman. They would have went right then and there and killed her. But he was fucking with the wrong one. I'm not about to kill no lady, man. I'm not about to kill nobody that's not trying to kill me. Think about what you do before you do it. Watch who you have around you. And don't be afraid to speak your fucking mind. I could have ended up with blood all over my hands without having blood on my hands. And luckily, I don't have that on my conscience. But it almost happened. We're gonna kill this council. I'm gonna cut her fucking head off. Nah, you're not. Y'all know what it is, man. It's Jay Williams. That's the life. Thank y'all for watching. To all my real ones. And the awesome real ones watching because y'all watching me. Y'all know what it is, man. Salute. So